States of emergencies have been declared in Florida, Georgia and the Carolinas as Hurricane Matthew barrels towards the southeast coastline. More than two million people have been urged to evacuate their homes. The record-breaking storm has already killed at least 26 people in Haiti and four in the Dominican Republic. The storm is expected to soon hit the Bahamas and then strengthen as it moves towards Florida. Meteorologists are predicting Matthew could be the strongest hurricane to hit the United States since Wilma in 2005. On Thursday, President Obama urged residents in the southeast to take precautions. I want to emphasize to the public, this is a serious storm. Uh, it has already hit Haiti uh, with devastating effect. It is now in the process of moving through the Bahamas. Because it's not going to be hitting enough land, uh, it is going to be building strength on its way to Florida. Uh, we anticipate that by tomorrow morning, it will already begin to have significant effect in Florida and then has the potential to uh, strengthen and move on up the coast uh, during the course of the day. Hurricane Matthew was the first Category 4 hurricane to hit Haiti in 52 years. The storm displaced thousands across Haiti, still recovering from the devastating 2010 earthquake. The storm also knocked out most communications across Haiti and flooded a major bridge connecting southern Haiti to the rest of the country. The United Nations warned the hurricane poses the greatest humanitarian threat to Haiti since the earthquake six years ago. Haiti's presidential election, scheduled for Sunday, has been postponed indefinitely. Many meteorologists are saying climate change has intensified Hurricane Matthew because warmer ocean waters help create stronger hurricanes. Matthew is already the longest-lived Category 4 or 5 hurricane in the Eastern Caribbean on record. To talk more about Hurricane Matthew and climate change, we're joined by two guests. In Philadelphia, Michael Mann joins us, distinguished professor of atmospheric science at Penn State University. His latest book, co-authored with the political cartoonist Tom Tolles, is titled The Madhouse Effect, How Climate Change Denial is Threatening Our Planet, Destroying Our Politics and Driving Us Crazy. Michael Mann is also author of the hockey stick and the climate wars dispatches from the front lines. And here in New York, we're joined by Oliver Millman, environmental reporter at The Guardian. His new piece is titled, Hurricanes Will Worsen As Planet Warms and Sea Levels Rise, Scientists Warn. Let's begin with Michael Mann. So, I've been watching TV, nonstop coverage um, of the hurricane that's barreling up um, through the southeast, just having left carnage in its wake in Dominican Republic and Haiti. Um, there is there's interview after interview. There's extreme weather signs flashing on the TV. But the two words I don't hear discussed our climate change. Even today on CNN, as they were talking to the head of the National Hurricane Center, they said, is there anything else you want to share with people? He was in Florida. Where is the discussion of climate change, Michael Mann? And what is the connection between this hurricane, uh, Matthew, and climate change? Uh, thanks, Amy. You know, it's unfortunate that uh, some uh, in the weather community are, are not providing that critical context for understanding uh, this uh, trend towards increasingly devastating tropical storms and hurricanes. Uh, Matthew uh, is a, a very good example of a storm that uh, was unique, unprecedented in certain respects. It intensified uh, far more quickly um, than uh, any other storm uh, that we've seen in modern history, uh, basically going from not even a tropical depression to a near-hurricane-strength storm uh, over the course of, uh, uh, you know, less than half a day, a and then the next day, of course, strengthening into a, a major hurricane, a Category 5 hurricane. It's weakened a little bit, but now it's restrengthening. And where that intensification, where that rapid intensification occurred was in the region of the Caribbean that has the greatest heat content. Not just that the ocean surface temperatures are warm, but there's a very deep layer of warm water. And that's important, because that helps sustain these storms as they churn up the ocean. Uh, the churning doesn't bring cold uh, water to the surface to, to weaken the storm if there's a deep layer of warmth. And that all uh, has a climate change signature uh, with it, uh, not just the fact that the ocean surface temperatures in the Caribbean 
are uh, at near record levels, but the, the, just the sheer depth of that warm water is unprecedented. And as the surface warming uh, penetrates into the ocean, we are seeing increases in ocean heat content. Uh, last year was the warmest our oceans have ever been on record. And that's critical context. It's that warmth that provides the energy that intensifies these storms. And it isn't a coincidence that we've seen the strongest hurricane in both hemispheres within the last year. And Oliver Millman, can you talk about uh, the fact that governors, some governors in the U.S. have declared states of emergency uh, and how likely that is to be effective as a means of, of protecting the, the devastation that's being anticipated? Sure. So there's states of emergency, um, Florida up to up to the Carolinas. Um, about two million people, as you mentioned before, have been asked to evacuate. Um, Barrier Islands uh, on the on the east uh, coast of Florida have already been completely evacuated now. Uh, Rick Scott, the governor of, uh, of Florida, has said that the, the state is expected to get a direct hit, although the National Hurricane Center the, said the path will run very close to Florida. So it's, it's not quite sure exactly how hard Florida will be hit, although this is one of the most significant hurricanes, certainly, to, to um, hit the U.S. In, in many years. And what do you make of the coverage? Because that's how people learn about uh, hurricanes like this. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I would I would kind of concur with um, what you and you and Michael said on on the coverage. It's been it's, it's been fairly fairly abysmal, really. If you look at if you look at the link between extreme weather and and climate change, that uh, it just isn't articulated regularly, especially by the cable cable TV. Uh, news uh, channels, I think, um, uh, online and print. There's there, there are certainly media that uh, are kind of exploring that link, um, and have done so quite eloquently. But um, certainly, if you if you tune into most uh, TV channels, that 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 is fairly absent. Michael Mann, your book, The Madhouse Effect: How Climate Change Denial Is Threatening Our Planet, Destroying Our Politics, and Driving Us Crazy. Talk about who the denialists are, the climate deniers are, and the effect it has on science and public understanding and what we need to do right now as we face this catastrophe. Yeah. So, you know, there's been a decades-long campaign uh, by fossil fuel interests and uh, politicians uh, who are in their pay, uh, paid talking heads, um, front groups, uh, all of which exist essentially for no other purpose than to confuse the public and policymakers about climate change, uh, to convince the public and policymakers that uh, the scientific uh, that there is no scientific consensus. Uh, the forces of denial, again, uh, most of them uh, funded or tied in some way to fossil fuel interests, understand that all they need to do is divide the public and confuse the public about this issue to prevent uh, progress from taking place. And I wanted to actually draw upon uh, something that Oliver mentioned. Uh, Governor Rick Scott of, of Florida um, has received quite a bit of funding from the Koch brothers over the years. Um, he is a climate change denier. So here you have a state which is on the front lines of dealing with the impacts of climate change, uh, and not just because of the possibility uh, of uh, more uh, extreme weather events, more intense hurricanes, uh, a trend that we see and a trend that we know is related to climate change. But you combine these intensifying storms with rising sea level, and uh, forgive the uh, pun, uh, you get a perfect storm uh, of consequences for coastal flooding. And we're going to see uh, exceptional coastal flooding uh, associated with Matthew, not just because of the intensity of the storm, but because of the fact that sea level rise has added substantially to the impact of storms like Matthew. Um, so there's this amazing hypocrisy, which we explore in the book. Uh, when it comes to politicians uh, like Rick Scott, who are almost literally burying their heads in the sand when it comes to acknowledging and recognizing the impacts of climate change. And ironically, you know, the city of Miami um, is already dealing with this problem. They're spending millions of dollars building pumps to help uh, pump out the seawater as it encroaches uh, upon uh, 
uh, Miami Beach. Uh, they're dealing with the impacts of climate change on a regular basis, and yet uh, their governor, Rick Scott, actually tried to outlaw <laughs> any discussion of climate change uh, or global warming in state-related business. So there's this amazing disconnect, and we do find ourselves in a madhouse, quite literally, when it comes to dealing with climate change deniers like Rick Scott and many other politicians who are essentially acting as agents for the fossil fuel industry, rather than representing our own interests. Now, we can change that. Uh, if people vote in November, vote climate, uh, not just at the top of the ticket, but all the way down. The only way this is going to change is if we elect politicians who are willing to uh, represent our interests, rather than the special interests that have funded these campaigns in the past. We're going to talk about top of the ticket in just a minute. We're speaking with Michael Mann. Uh, his new book is The Madhouse Effect, How Climate Change Denial is Threatening Our Planet, Destroying Our Politics and Driving Us Crazy. And Oliver Millman, who is, writes for The Guardian U.S. about climate change. We'll talk about the top of the ticket and climate denial. Uh, we'll talk about the debates, how the last debate that just took place this week, the only vice presidential debate, not one question asked on climate change, as uh, Hurricane Matthew was smashing Haiti on its way to the U.S. Stay with us.